So there was a hurricane last week, and after dealing with that, this is our second storm of the season so far, and it's very early, and it's just got me thinking that, you know what, I need to have a pre-established checklist of things to do and things to buy right before the storm, because that's going to take some mental load off. So that's what we're making today. Those printables are available on uh, my Patreon to all tiers. You can just search for Dolling Cottage Diary if you are interested. Otherwise, you're just going to need a 12 by 12 piece of craft paper, and then all of the dimensions of the things I'm cutting are going to be uh, in the text on the screen. So with this, I also thought I would <laughs> talk about the different things I keep in my disaster prep kit. For anybody who is into prepping, you probably already have a lot of this, or if you live in a, like a natural disaster prone area, this is going to be different depending on where you live. We're not prone to forest fires here. We're not prone to earthquakes here. We have hurricanes, tornadoes, flash floods. Um, we just have extreme weather because I live in a subtropical region. So this would be different probably depending on what region you live in, but I'm going to talk about some things that make it easier for me to go, you know, three to 14 days without power and being able to kind of hole up in my home. We are a very like batten down the hatches kind of people. So, um, so you can evacuate. Obviously, I don't like to because it's expensive and you never know how long a storm is going to linger, the kind of damage if you're going to be able to get back to your home. Um, I have made the mistake of evacuating when we thought it was going to be a really bad storm and it turned at the last minute, didn't even hit us. And we spent 10 hours in traffic that usually only takes about two hours to get somewhere. Um, and then I've also evacuated during a storm where we thought it was going to be a two or three day situation and it ended up being 14 days and we were just bumping around different cheap hotels, staying with family, staying with friends all over the state because we could not physically get back to our house. So from now on, I am like, for the most part, any other time I like to stay put and just make my comf my, my home, my little, my little castle as comfortable as I can during times like this. So, um, the gear that I use and the stuff that makes me comfortable during these sorts of things. First and foremost, I would recommend having a generator. Um, you know, if it's a propane and gas one, you have the option of, you know, two different fuels and whatever you can find. Because um, obviously, you, depending on how long you're without power, you're going to need to go forage for more fuel. And that can be a lot. Um, I know a lot of people keep like solar batteries, solar charge batteries and stuff like that for emergency preparedness, which is fine if you don't live in a hot region. Um, I do, and you can't run an air conditioner, like even a little window unit, you can't run that. Uh, most cooling stations on those solar generated batteries. So that's why I, <laughs> why a lot of people in the area opt for the bigger you know, con consumable generators. So um, if you live in a cooler region, I imagine, I, I know a lot of people who you know, are off grid and they just use that for their lights and basics. Um, but yeah, so generator is nice when it's 102 degrees and 100% humidity the week after the storm before you get power back. So that's definitely a it's an expensive luxury, but it's really nice to have, <laughs> especially when you have little kids, especially when like, I don't know, I could rough it a lot better when I was younger and now I'm like, mm. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and speaking of that, obviously there are things like long-term canned food that are easy to heat up, like, you know, pre-made canned soups and um, canned fruit and boxed things that can easily be made into quick meals um, that, that is good to have and that grocery list that I included on the printables that's like the fresh food last second trip to the grocery store <laughs> you know that we that that's the stuff you get that will keep on the counter just fine 
for, you know, until it's eaten, if you lose power to your fridge. But the primary thing to remember with this kind of thing is that, or this kind of situation is that it's like camping in your house, losing power, losing AC, losing possibly water. I am extremely fortunate. I have an old house that's hooked up to the old infrastructure of the town I live in. So I very rarely lose water pressure. And I also have a gas uh, water heater on my house. And so even if we lose power, we still have access to hot water. Again, that can get turned off or um, you know, a water line can be damaged. Things can always happen, but it's different than if you like live out in the country and your water pump to your well is hooked up to it's dependent upon the electricity. I had to deal with that when I was a kid. <laughs> so if we lost power, we lost water immediately. And so if you're in that kind of situation, it's good to fill up your bathtub so that you have water to put in the back of the tank of the toilet to be able to flush because nobody wants to be that nasty. And you also want to have you know extra water bottles for drinking and everything, but then bathing gets gross. And if it's 100 degrees outside and you don't have AC, it's just, it's not fun, you feel gross real quick. So anything you would take on a really hot camping trip is stuff that you wanna have in your house. And obviously there are other things I could talk about that are like very much survival stuff, but there are so many videos on that. This is, this is glamping survival that I'm gonna talk about now because um, you know, gallon of water per person per day and that kind of thing. Like all of that information is readily available for me to stay sane and still feel kind of cute during this whole situation. Cause if mama feels cute, then, then everybody is going to be in a better mood cause mama's in a better mood. <laughs> so <laughs> things that I do to try to make myself feel okay in this situation, or if you're going camping and it's hot, um, baby wipes, all of the baby wipes. I like the sensitive ones because they're water-based and they have less soap in them. So, um, deodorant wipes as well as a ton and ton and ton of deodorant for you and your kids. Um, wash all of your clothes, all of your dishes before the storm. Cause again, you don't know when you're going to be able to clean them and you don't want to be going through this with dirty drawers. So it's good to have that. Um, I like having little facial mists, rose water, or, you know, they're d different makeup companies make cute little sleeping facial mists or whatever. It's nice to be able to spray something cool on your face Go going through this, especially if you're not washing as normally as you would. Um, other things that I like are just little battery operated fans that you can plug into solar power banks because those don't use a whole lot of power and you're not using you know, if you don't have a generator or whatever, it's like, it's something, <laughs> it's something. And it's not your, your arm having to expend calories to pump a fan in your face. Like the like the little electronic ones are nice to have. And then things like dry shampoo. <laughs> I can't do the, the spray ones. It makes me cough, but there's a little compact one that you just kind of powder puff it on your roots. And it works really well. I'm going to put all of this, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put all of this in an Amazon list. It'll be late, labeled like disaster prep or hurricane prep or something like that. And I'll link that below just so that y'all can see what I'm talking about. Because I know I'm not showing any of the gear. But anyway, so another thing that I like to have, which is kind of glamping, kind of just general survival stuff, is having a camp stove. Really nice to be able to heat up food and stuff. And again, if you have a generator, you can hook up you know, a small microwave to it a lot of times. You, like a generator solves a lot of these issues, but I know that's not accessible to a lot of people. And I didn't have one until this year. So um, it's really nice to have that option. Plus turning it on and all of that, sometimes it's just easier to meet the need by itself right there without hooking everything up. So I like having um, the BioLite camp stove it runs on just twigs or pine cones or whatever dry, you know, wood or leaves or whatever you can find. And it's got a little fan in it. So it does have to be charged ahead of time, but I, the battery lasts for a really long time. I kind of just keep mine 
charged and it, it turns the fan on and then the heat from the fire recharges it. And as it charges, it also has USB where you can plug in small devices like your phone or battery operated fan or whatever rechargeable stuff. You can plug it in and the fire produces electricity to charge. And it's really cool and it has a, it's pretty compact too. It's really good for backpackers, but that thing is nice because it boils water really quickly. It has a really big kettle that sits on top of it that I like to make. I like to make soup ahead of time because it's easy to heat up and it's comforting. <laughs> so, um, you know, you're just down to one dish kind of thing. So, and you can also heat up water for coffee. Make sure you have either instant coffee or tea and a way to make it like a French press or a teapot or something without electricity. A lot of people don't think about that. And then they're not only going through hurricane, they're going through caffeine withdrawal, which is not fun. So that is definitely high on my priority list. Um, there are also little electric kettle thermos things that you can get to. Again, if you already have a generator on or if you have a bigger battery, you can plug it in. It just has to be a three prong because it does suck a lot of energy. Other tips that I'm that are coming to me are putting a lot of water bottles in your freezer again way ahead of the storm so that if you lose power and you don't have a way to power your fridge and your freezer they not only are clean drinking water <laughs> and cold drinking water for you as they defrost but they also act as kind of kind of like turning your freezer into an ice chest so it keeps your food cold for longer that you don't want to go bad as the, um, the ice melts inside the water bottles. So, or gallon bags. I like the water bottles because the gallon bags I've had break open and spill everywhere and it's gross. So um, that's one of, that, that's something that is important to do as, long, as well as filling the bathtub. Like those are my two biggest water tips. Gas and cash are also super important because gas trucks can't always get into the city or into just anywhere to deliver the gas after the storm and so it's just, if you have to go somewhere it's just better to have your car already gassed up and then the cash a lot of places don't have power but they'll be open like the hardware stores and a lot of the grocery stores they'll be open but their internet or their power will be down to the cash registers because their generators are trying to keep the food cold and so it's good to have cash because you can't run your card <laughs> or if you do run your card, you can like write down the information and they'll run it later, but I don't like having my information floating around on a piece of paper somewhere randomly. So cash is always good. And then um, if you live in a cold region, having little hand warmers are really nice to have. Make sure you have an ax, a paper map in case you have to leave because the map app on your phone probably won't work. Basic first aid kit. I like getting a real nice one as well as things like live straws or grails that are um, really good water uh, water purifiers, iodine tablets. I've never had to use any of those <laughs> in during a, a disaster situation. I have when I've been out, you know, camping and stuff. But um, it's just good to have those just in case. That's one of those. They're not that expensive, and the peace of mind is worth it. They last a long time, so. I definitely have those in my kit. Fortunately, I haven't had to use them. Mosquito repellent, again, a lot of people don't think about that after the storm. You're gonna be outside clearing branches and checking your house and mosquitoes are gonna be really bad. So, or if you are an essential oil girly like me, <laughs> just have some pre-made in a spritz bottle uh, or some salve or something so that you, you have you know bug protection. Uh, inflatable mattress or boat if you are in a flood zone at all sometimes even not then <laughs> because you don't want to walk in flood water if you can help it the bacteria the sewage is nasty but also snakes and gators and even the fish will bite you down here so that's in, it's it, at least have your kids and your pets on something that will float speaking of pets if you live in a disaster prone region make sure that they are crate trained a lot of people i know object to that because oh my gosh they need to have space to roam around the crate training that i do with mine is their crate is always set up 
it's always available. It's always, um, it's their bed, you know, it's their little cave that they can go to. I always put a blanket or a sheet on top of it and it's, you know, got blankets and comfortable stuff to lay on and you don't use it as more of a punishment or anything. I very rarely lock mine up. Usually it's because she's torn something up <laughs> the last time I leave because she gets anxiety and so I'll give her a little calming treat and put her in her bed the next time I leave so she remembers, oh yeah, that's not okay to tear things up. But if you have to leave with your pet, it's really important that, you know, especially hotels or other people's houses, they have a containment area because they're going to be stressed and on top of it, you don't want them running around. So just, they need to have their comfortable little space and be comfortable in a crate. Plus that also helps with, you know, them understanding that they don't use the bathroom in this new place. You only go to the bathroom when you're outside. Crate training helps with all of that in a <laughs> in an animal's psychology. And I just wanted to take a minute to thank Ephemera Club for supporting me this month. Brooke, Miss Empty Pages, Francie, Anita, Kathy, Venus, Catherine, Anya. Kim, Nikki, Tanya, Tracy, Shayna, Krista, Donna, Cindy, Kathleen, Sasha, Patsy, Teresa, Effie, Kim, Emily, Carly, Carrie, Leprechaun Mom, Britt, Alicia, Kenna, Rachel, Denise, Ariel, Raja, and Jennifer. Appreciate you guys so much. And if you don't know what Ephemera Club is, it is on my Patreon. And it's just a monthly support to help support the making of more videos. And I also create both digital downloads and printables every month according to the theme everybody votes on as well as little uh, physical parcels snail mail parcels happy mail that i send out depending on again the theme that's chosen by members so appreciate y'all so much i'll put the link down in the description if you are curious but otherwise as far as this video is concerned please share your um, disaster prep <laughs> disaster prep tips and leave me a little a little wind emoji or a little tornado emoji or something in the in the comments so that i know you were here even if you don't have anything to contribute it's nice to know that y'all are real people <laughs> and that y'all y'all liked the video so um yeah if you have any it, and it doesn't have to be disaster prep it can also be like glamping tips and things that just make the outdoors more comfortable and I'm sure we can put together some really cool ideas together. Anyway, thank you so much for being here, and I hope to see you back next week for the new video. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Bye.